a storage unit in LA <laughs> along with the other instruments. I'm going to I'm going to request or don't play. I'm going to request that Claire Fraser <laughs> plays some guitar at some Wait, you do don't you do something like that in season what season does it you sing? You're traveling. Oh God, no. You wonder, it was such a talent. You're such a talent. <laughs> <laughs> the most embarrassing episode of my life. I you don't, you don't have one. like a mandolin or anything, do no, you? No, no. God, we should suggest No, that. I think, I think I was just that cheesy and bad. You think I had a mandolin <laughs> in my arm. You were like a joker. <laughs> like a joker card. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Where they've got the, I mean, I was have, in like, like I had some like We're jesters We're or like jugglers dancing. costume <laughs> and I was I mean that was so bad oh, you can tell God. from that that you were really cool when you were younger <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> so okay so would you say that you when you were younger were quite like a uh, punk like no not punk I, w- I was definitely it was peak grunge I was definitely peak like grunge time when yeah, is that like the 90s 90s I was born in the 90s yeah, but I was a teenager in yeah, the true, 90s, true. Lord. Okay, yeah, that's fair. That's, that's fair. <laughs> um, but it was that thing. Yeah, there was a lot of a lot of moping around, you know, supposing that you're depressed when you're not really. That totally um, hasn't changed. I think that's, I think that's just universal to teenagers, mm-hmm. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, but I used to go to this summer college, a Gaelic summer college where you go to speak I don't, Irish. Sorry, I don't mean to laugh. I don't mean <laughs> like, to laugh. Why are you laughing? It was cool, right? Um, but it was like... It was cool! <laughs> <laughs> it was cool! All right? Um, yes. I, actually, that is actually a really cool thing because I can't speak. I can speak like a minute amount of Spanish and anyone that can speak more than one language is cool. And that's very cool. So Says you're cool. Lauren Lyle. <laughs> <laughs> I've been anointed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, so we used to go to this summer college thing every summer and it was like, you know, 500 teenagers between the ages of like 14 and 18 and it was in the west coast of Ireland and you would like have to go to class in the morning for a couple of hours but then all evening you just have to yourselves and it was, it was beautiful. It was like, yeah. But there was just all these cool women and well girls and guys who would just sit around rocks playing guitar smoking cigarettes yeah. and like just being and so all of that it's music like proper, and stuff like breakfast club yeah teenage kicks in, in an Irish version of that yeah, I, but that's like kind of how I see it that's what yeah. I mean when I heard it I was like I don't know why. I at one point thought she was Irish. Maybe that was it, but she yeah, it was she's just American, like yeah. she yeah. was it. She's she. I don't even know what she went on. Really, I sort of like I, I kind of do that. I like pick an album or two. Like I'm not sort yeah. of like oh I love this person for all their career. You uh-huh. know what I mean? Uh-huh. Um, but she was in a great band called Throwing Muses, and I remember being quite into them for a little bit, and then, I don't know, I haven't listened to that in years, but... I kind of see you as, like, a rock chick. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, I do, I kind of... When I, I was like, yeah, this person's, like, a bit wild and a bit, um, like, I, that's how I sort of see you, is this, like, secretly quite wild free spirit. And you like pull yourself together incredibly well at all times, and then sometimes like you just spark. I don't know that I do. I mean, it's funny. I think because I've had to be quite responsible in the last decade of my life, mm-hmm. I've become quite yeah. Well, you've encouraged sensible. me to you well, well, <laughs> you've encouraged me to do some not sensible things, and all in all. <laughs> All in favour of being my twenties, and yeah. you've actually, you actually have you've been like I think a, you have to have fun in your twenties. Yeah, but you you have at times because I well, have stay been, safe, kids. But you know. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, disclaimer, big disclaimer. That's who I see you as. Who you are, as much as you have to be very responsible. I mean, that like you run a sh- you you are number one on a show. You are you are the Outlander. You well, are not really. I mean, I, I I don't run shit, but no, no but, but it is. What I mean, it's, like it's, you, it's been. I have to say, like, being on something like this, it is. It's quite surprising to me <laughs> that I'm able to hold it together and uh-huh. like, but you know, and, and sort of show up every day and be professional and have my work done because I was not that person <laughs> in were my you, 20s. Were or, you that person right before it started? Do you um, I definitely think, I think when I was in LA, when I moved to LA, that was like a big 
life change for me because I think I had far too much fun and and not even fun I think I was also very fearful in my 20s and not really didn't quite know how to cope with things or Mm -hmm. how to show up for myself and um I think I sort of when I moved to LA I was like okay I want my life to go in this direction so I got to get my shit together a little yeah. bit. And I think that's really, that, that's just like good advice for, I think women, men, everyone generally though, that to not be fearful of that and to just yeah. go for it. I think I had a year, <laughs> I, I sort of do this like every year around uh, New Year's. I, I write a letter. <laughs> we, it's like it. a tradition we okay, have. Okay. And usually it's like whoever we spend New Year's with and it's sort of like, being grateful for the things that you really liked about the previous year and then also writing down your goals for the next year but also the things you want to get rid of Ah. and and then you burn it outdoors preferably Uh or in a safe space not outdoors if you're in like a you know (laughs) just somewhere safe just so what like what sort of things do you get rid of well like I think every year I have procrastination on it and it's still not working Ah. but that's natural but I think one year I was definitely I I just you know I'm I'm sick of being fearful of things mm-hmm. and just it, it has to be a year of just saying fuck it and just yeah. go and do it and I think that might have even been the year I moved to LA and I, I completely changed my life I mean I, I moved to LA I knew one person I you know left all my friends my job everything and I just was like I I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it because if I don't try at least I'm gonna really regret it mm-hmm. and I think that's the thing you you make the life you want mm-hmm You know, it's up to you. And I think that's a really scary moment when you realize you're like, oh, wait, (laughs) I'm responsible for this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Like, I'm the one driving this shit. And like the dawn of the realization of that. That's quite, that like takes back actually to what we were saying at the beginning of like you being your own person in your brain. Like it's just you. And then having, like I do, I do remember because this this whole podcast sort of derived from me in my 20s not having considered like the artistic influences of women on my life. I, I could pull on men easily and where things had come from whatever and I suddenly just like started to get to know myself a little bit and was just with me and thought god I actually don't know what who the women are and there are they're they're there but I hadn't considered or thought about it and it's almost like in your 20s that turning point of yeah like getting to know yourself a little bit and having to like sit with yourself in some ways I mean this is a huge generalization and not everyone's like this but in some ways we're quite we're, we're, we're not as quick to sort of stand up and be like, well, this is what I've achieved and this is what I'm doing. Totally. And like, look at this, isn't this great? And I, and I think that that's something we can really take from or learn from men is that that willingness to sort of stand up and, you know, like fearless. proclaim your achievements in some way or talk totally. about your, you know, your goals and what you're, you know, where you want to go and what you want to do. And, yeah. and at least, I don't know whether this is also a cultural thing, having been brought up in Ireland or in the UK is we're just not really taught to, to be as effusive with those things. And I think for me, that's one of the great things that I learned in the States and, and being in LA and, and being in New York, like really helped me with, it was actually being okay with, you know, sort of standing up and saying oh well I, I'm ambitious and uh-huh. I want things and, and I've done this and, and I'm gonna do this that. and I, I really want to go there and yeah. it's okay to sort of say that you want more yeah you know well that that's like I guess like a bit like Wanda like if she it's all like I guess there's this thing where it's almost could be considered obnoxious like some people may have called her obnoxious to have written it be in it and have directed it when actually that's unbelievable that's amazing and I guarantee you most creative people want to do something like that yeah. and why should you? And also the you? amazing thing with that film um, I think she had a crew of four no so it's like she had the cameraman um, I think it was like very the sound, skeletons yeah, I mean the, the sound, sound is terrible but, like, you, can't, but you love that like, that's but it's, what's but so it great it's, like I mean, it's, it's such a low budget you know oh, it, but you but know I think that. that that's also something that really inspired me because it's that thing of we can do anything we just have to the the difference between successful people and not successful people is not some like magic equation it's people who actually do Mm. and I think that's always the biggest thing that I try and remind myself it's like when I when I feel a little intimidated or overwhelmed by 
you know, wanting to achieve something or doing something. It's like, well, these other people who are doing it, it's not like they know something that 